welcome to Ottawa Eats. I'm your host, Tom Schock. Thanks again for joining us. And this week, we thought we'd do something just a little bit different because on Ottawa Eats, we talk a lot about food. What goes with food? A drink. A nice, beautiful, cold, frothy beverage made by the fine folks at Broadhead. Today, we're going to learn how to make beer with Broadhead Brewing. Favorite show so far. We haven't even started. Today we're at Broadhead Brewing Company and uh, this is Jamie and his co-founder along with his friend Josh. You guys are living the dream I think of most males. Yes. You run a brewery. That's correct. Very cool brewery and this idea, this all came together uh, kind of on a fluke on a dare? Or uh, what was it? What happened? How did you guys say, hey let's go and make beer? Well it's kind of weird. I homebrewed back in, I'll say just after high school. Josh actually homebrewed all through university. And it was about four guys getting together, uh, and it was a hobby that literally went nuts on us. It really? Was, uh, it got out of control, and all of our neighbors started asking for beer, and it just exploded. Hmm. So you're saying that your raging alcoholism <laughs> led to your job? That could be said that way, yeah, I guess. Okay, well, we'll leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, okay, that works. Sure. So when you guys were first making beer, and I, you said that you kind of did it, you know, after high school and all that kind of stuff, and you are both in school, uh, was it just something you guys did for fun, or was it something that you guys did because, well, you were cheap and you didn't want to go and buy beer? Or? Yeah, basically, uh, both of us went to engineering school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a student, you don't have a lot of extra money. Right. Uh, you want to party just like anybody else does while you're going to school. So for us, uh, making the beer, we got a kick out of that, but it was also uh, easy on the pocketbook. So, uh, you know, we made a little 20 liter system and sure enough, you get 20 liters out at a time and that's what we started with. That's a lot of beer. Yeah. 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 So how much beer do you drink on the average week? <laughs> on the average week? I would say on average, I drink a pint a day. Some okay. days, uh, it depends. Uh, depends what uh, is going on. You might drink five or six pints that day. Do you ever swim in it when you're... <laughs> I mean, we can take this out maybe, but do you ever swim in the beer? I do not swim in the beer, no. Mm, that totally ruined my, <laughs> my vision of what a brewery should be. Yeah, These yeah. guys there with your floaties, just swimming <laughs> in the... No, maybe not. Uh, with Broadhead, when you guys made your very first batch of beer, yes. how was it? Honestly, uh, it's not... On the commercial side or Yeah, you guys, you, you weren't really ready to release it yet. You're going, okay, let, let's try and actually make a beer as a collective. It tasted like... Diamond Tap. Okay, <laughs> grape or cherry? Yeah, well, grape. Okay, that's yeah. not bad. I think Homer would be very proud. Yeah, I think he would. Yeah, so uh, from the perfection process and all the stuff that happened after that and where you guys are today, yep. what's that journey been like for you guys and how long have you been doing something like this? Uh, on the commercial side of things, uh, we've been three full years now. Okay. Um, so, you know, going into our fourth year. Mm -hmm. um, the journey's been absolutely crazy. I think Josh described it a couple of times as you go through every single emotion. Right. A uh, little, little thing about our brewery is we've actually built absolutely everything. So it, it you know, from frustrations, building equipment, breaking mm -hmm. equipment, that kind of thing, it isn't just the brewing for us, it's maintaining all of that. So yeah. it's been a wild three years. Yeah, it's because it's, uh, when you talk about craft breweries, you guys literally build everything by hand. It's not like you guys are ordering prefabricated materials or, no. or the big drums or the brewing, pr it's all made by you guys. Absolutely. Uh, a lot Why? Of our, Why do that? Why uh, make it so hard on yourself? <laughs> I think for us, uh, me being a mechanical engineering technologist and Josh being an aerospace engineer, I think half of the kick you know, we get just as much enjoyment out of making beer mm -hmm. as actually making the devices that make the beer. Right. Okay. So for us, you know, you'll see later, uh, we have a mash ton that we've welded together and mm -hmm. done things and it was recycled out of uh, an old dairy barn. Right. Things like that. Um, and then we know our equipment well, we know the ingredients that go into it. So we get just a, just a big a kick out of that. So is it safe to say that Broadhead is a couple of guys nerding out on beer? Pretty much, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So <laughs> we're going to find out how you guys make the beer, and we're going to come right back and uh, get into it with grains and hops and yeast and what else? Uh, you got water? all kinds of ingredients. Today we're water. brewing we uh, water, right? the Long Shot White. So you oh. need water. We're yeah. going to get some orange peel in there. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Can we swim in it? No. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we've switched out one beard for another. Uh, this is Josh, and who has a rather impressive beard. As long as I've known you, this is probably the fluffiest I've ever seen you. Pretty proud of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should be. Uh, mine's gone now. So uh, let's talk about uh, the biggest ingredient in beer other than water, which is your, your hops, your barley, your malts, and all the other stuff that goes into it. So for a standard, uh, let's say a pale ale, what's going into something like that? Uh, predominantly, well, for all beers, the, the base malt is a Canadian two-row. Okay. Uh, that's going to be the majority of the grains, 80 to 90 percent. Uh, and then on top of that, you put specialties in. So mm -hmm. in a pale ale, it's going to be mostly uh, crystal malts. Mm -hmm. uh, caramelized sugars give it some color and some sweetness. Right. So uh, with what we're, what are we making today? What's, what's this going to go into? Uh, this is our long shot white, which okay. is a wheat beer. Right, so there's a couple of special ingredients. We won't ask you to divulge the recipe, obviously, but uh, there's some different things that go into it, and there's always different amounts of malts and yeast for a different type of beer. Am I wrong in saying that? Or? Uh, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, the the malts vary quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, like I was saying, 80 to 90% is the base malt. Right. So that last 10% makes up the difference between all the beers. Okay. So between a stout and a blonde ale, there's actually very little difference. So um, how did you discover what goes into what beer? Was this all trial and error for you? Definitely. Okay, <laughs> right? You're a bit of a scientist. Yes. Right. Um, uh, what's your favorite kind of beer to number one make and number two to drink? Right. Uh, well, the Underdog Pale Ale was the first recipe I've ever made. Okay. Uh, sort of the holy grail of home brewing. It's got a special and, yes. spot in your heart there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so it's fun to brew too because there's a lot of hops that go in there. So it smells pretty awesome in here when that happens. Yeah, yeah. And your favorite one to drink? It would be the same. Same? Yeah. Always? Yeah. Well, no, I switch it up. Oh, yeah? yeah? Okay. So you're a hoppier beer kind of guy? Is that what you're going after usually? or? Yeah. that's. Yeah. I'd say that's what got me into uh, craft beer. That and the alcohol. Well, <laughs> it helps. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we doing here? So what's the process at this point? Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, put this into our grain mill. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole point is to take the grains and crack them open. So that's right. the, the whole grain. And what we want to do is get at the starches inside. Okay. So to do that, we need to crack them open. Right. Uh, one by one, right? Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a really <laughs> painstaking process. That's what you're paying for here at Broadhead. This beer will be ready next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it, you put it into this? Yeah, or? so I just got to do a quick prep yeah, here. Absolutely. You've got to move a couple of things around. You said this is going to get sure dusty. the bottom is closed. Oh, good. Yes, that's always important. <laughs> um, so what we have is a small hopper up top mm -hmm. and then a large one underneath. So the grain mill is in between mm -hmm. and it's going to preload the hopper on the bottom so that we can later go and mash that grain in. Is this going to be loud? It's going to be a little bit loud. All right. Uh, should I plug my ears? Not that loud. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> the machine has an interesting story too. Oh, yeah? So, oh, yeah. the... Uh, the motor that we're using was actually used in a uh, Transport Canada investigation um, looking at a uh, steering control system failure in the courtroom, trying to prove that there was an issue with it. So we're using evidence? Yes. Technically to make <laughs> beer? Is this what, did you steal it? Uh, no, it was going to be thrown out, so we've, we've saved it from the scrapyard. Ah, yeah. it's not stealing if they're not going to keep it. <laughs> All right, okay, so with your evidence, uh, we have to crack these open then, I guess. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to turn the mill on. Right. So that's the that's a big step. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good so first I, step. I thought it was going to be louder. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm reassured. Thanks, Josh. All, All right. right. So I'm just going to throw it in the top hopper here. Mm -hmm. Now, how many bags of this would traditionally go into a, a mash? Uh, we're going to do about six, I guess. Okay. Yeah. It looks so strong when you do it. <laughs> and keeping track of what we're doing is important. Oh, so you do have a system. That's good. So you don't just keep counting your head. I tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so you would put six bags of that in. And would you put anything else in up here? Or is this just where you would do the grains? Uh, the just the grains, yeah. Okay. So a malt and all the different ingredients and all that stuff you would add later on? Uh, yeah, so these are actually malted grains. Mm -hmm. So the malting is a process that 
starts the germination mm -hmm. and then cuts it off. So, But something like an orange peel or a coriander or whatever, that would be at a specific stage in the process as well? That's right. So it's going to go in at the boil stage and it's going to extract all of that flavor and aroma. All right. So we should probably throw more bags of grain. So we're going to throw some more bags of grain in here and we're going to go and see stage two in just a second. I need a, I need a bag, Josh. Give me a bag. <laughs> Is it inappropriate to say bag me? That's inappropriate. Do you want to see if I have my farmer skill still and I can throw this in? Yes. If I drop a whole bag of grain, how much do I owe you? Uh, only about 30 bucks. It's a few beers though. <clears throat> All right. Is this heavy? This is heavy, isn't it? 25 kilograms. 25 kilograms! That sounds heavy. Oh my god! Why am I so weak? Will this fit in? It All will, yeah. yeah. Don't have a lot of headroom up here either, eh? Nope. <laughs> oh my god. I'm a, such a gentle soul. <coughs> a little dusty. If I leave a couple of grains in here, how many do I owe you? <laughs> it's on the house. All right. saw us put all the uh, the grain in basically what uh, amounts to a mill of sorts and uh, now you've joined Josh and I here by the beautiful baths of Broadhead. This is lovely where you can exfoliate your skin and your beard apparently. It's good for, for it. Yeah it is, it is very good for it. So what's happening right now? So what's coming in and, and why is the water the temperature that it is? What's the process that's going on right now? Right, so these are all the grains after they've been cracked open. Mm -hmm. um, so now we've exposed the starches inside uh, to the hot water. And what's going to happen, we, we dial the water temperature in very specifically uh, to activate enzymes that are going to take those starches and turn them into sugars. Are you putting just the grains in at this point? Is that it? And water? That's right, yeah, just grain and water now, and we'll put hops and other additions later on in the boil. Now, and the water, there's nothing added to the water, it's just plain old water, right? Yeah, just okay. straight city water. So, now this uh, unit in, its, in and of itself, it's not just uh, a big barrel, there's uh, almost like a false floor to it, kind of That's thing? That's right, yeah, it's essentially a strainer in the bottom. Uh, after we're done this, we want to get all the water out, uh, which will become wort, uh, but leave the grains behind. Right. Now there's the most glamorous part of your job, which is shoveling out, uh, I guess you could call it the waste that's left over. That's right, um, yeah. And is that your favorite part of the job? Uh, second least favorite. <laughs> What's the least favorite? Least favorite is cleaning the boil pot after a double brew day. So is that what you make Jamie do, or? Uh, I'm stuck doing it. I've, <laughs> I've tried to get everyone to do it, and they, they won't. They're too smart. Not even paper, rock, scissors? No, I no. lose every time. All right. So um, if you're doing a different type of beer, if you're doing a darker beer or a specific flavor that you're really going, let's say a seasonal beer that you would make one time, are you going for a specific type of grain that might be from a different part of the world if you're doing something a little bit special or is it all pretty much the same? Yeah, when I'm doing you know one-offs or seasonals, I like to play around again and yeah. you know, try out different things. There's, there's a lot out there no matter how much you try and you, know, you never get to all of it. So. It's yeah. fun to try new things. Do you do test batches at home first before you do it on a large scale? I used to. You used to, yeah. but now you just go for it? <laughs> now I roll the dice and I'll make at least uh, 800 liters at a time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if it was a small mistake, then maybe you and your friends hang out and have a good weekend? It's a very good party. Yeah, okay. All right. So from this stage, so how long does it take to go from what you're doing right now to when it's all said and done and you're moving it to the next stage? Right, so it'll take us about 45 minutes to mash in and mix all the grains in. Uh, and then it's going to sit for an hour and a half at that temperature. Mm -hmm. And is it a steady temperature? Yes. So the, and, yep. and how do you control that? Is that... Uh, just based on the temperature of the water coming in and the rate at which we're mixing everything. Oh, okay. All right. So from this stage, this is the beginning process of what will then become beer eventually. That's right. Yeah. right. So this is in its infancy. This is baby beer. <laughs> Babies don't drink this. That's not a good idea. I shouldn't have said that. That's that's terrible. Do you mind if I row? Absolutely. Can I row? Alright. I feel like I'm going gently down the beer stream. Row, row, row your boat. Gently we'll get drunk. Is that a song? That could be a song, right? It is now. Yeah. It's 
Nice. Should this be even or does it matter? You're just kind of getting it to move around a little bit? Yeah, keeping it mixed well and trying to avoid clumps of grain. Uh. Uh. So much stirring. Can't you guys invent an automatic system for this? <laughs> I'm tired. I now have 15% in broadhead stocks. With each stroke, I get 0.35%. Stroke. 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 Stroke, 1%. So, pretty basic ingredients to start with, but Josh, you're gonna explain to us maybe some of the things that you would add in later on to add some of the different tastes and spices that you would get in different types of beer. Yeah, for sure. So what we're getting here is the malt flavor, uh, some sweetness and the alcohols. Uh, we also wanna add some bitterness and then some other flavors and aromas. So in this particular beer, it's our long shot white. It's uh, spiced with orange peel and coriander. So I can show you what the three ingredients are going to be. We've got our hops here on the left, which add the bitterness. Um, have powdered orange peel and some fresh coriander seed. Uh, that's going to give it the citrus flavor and aroma. When does Josh take over the stirring again? Does that happen now? Now? What about now? I'm tired. I'd rather he finish. <laughs> So we're standing here next to the really shiny hot cylinder. We saw what happened going into it, but at this stage right now, what is happening exactly? Basically, we're doing a process called fly sparging uh, right now. There's grain in there, it's mixed with hot water mm -hmm. at a very specific temperature. And what you're trying to do is extract things like uh, sugars mm -hmm. that later on in the fermentation process, the yeast is gonna react with and make alcohol. Right, now this system that you guys have here specifically, this is something that you guys created. You mentioned earlier how um, you've taken pieces from old dairy farms and kind of put yeah. stuff together. Is this something that you've created and kind of tailored to what you guys need it for? Exactly, so uh, at Broadhead here, Josh and I, uh, our DIY uh, process, I'll call it, we recycle absolutely everything mm -hmm. that we possibly can. So this is an old Sunset dairy cooler out of a dairy barn. Uh, it used to be used for cooling milk in a dairy barn um, and now we've converted it. Our whole theory was if it can hold uh, a dairy product very cold, theoretically it should be able to hold beer very hot. Right. And your theory was correct. Our theory was <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice when it works out, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So from this process right now with what's happening, so what happens after this and how long does this whole process usually take to take it from here to the next stage so from this actual point in the process uh, you're gonna be maybe 45 minutes transferring all the wort out mm -hmm. of here um, and you're just doing that by pumping all that out putting hot water back on top of the grains pulling all those sugars out as mm -hmm. it goes and you're pumping it into your boil pot um, the whole process of about 45 minutes it's kind of a stupid question but why aren't things like this clear so you can see What's going on? Is I that, think is a lot that of the because time, of glass? Is it because it's yeah, I don't, I'm, I can't really answer that. I think a lot of the time, uh, you know, brewing it gets associated with stainless steel or copper. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time, you know, your vats are made of stainless steel and you can't see through. Right. Okay. That's a good enough answer. I'll take that one. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So we're we're done with this and it's going through here and it's going where and what's happening over here. So right now all the warts going through this line down here. Uh, we pump it out. It goes through this pump and then it gets pumped into the boil pot. Is it being filtered in any way or is it going in basically the, all the materials from there right into here? No, all of our beer uh, that we make here is unfiltered, uh, unfiltered beer. Okay. Um, we don't put any additives or adjuncts in the beer and we don't filter it. So it's right. as natural as we can get it. And the temperature that it's going to sit out in here is at what and for how long? So depending on the recipe, you're going to have beer coming into the pot between I'll say 140, 150 degrees Fahrenheit, all the way up to 170. And then during the boil process, you're gonna bring that up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit or about 100 degrees C. Now, with a darker beer, yes. would you be boiling that at a lower temperature or a higher temperature? Does that not really matter? Doesn't really matter. Any process, uh, any beers, 
uh, they're all going to boil at the same temperature, mm -hmm. which is 100 degrees C, and you're going to boil that off for about an hour. Okay. So with with everything that's in here now, you've you're finished with this stage. What happens after this? Whenever you're done with this? After this stage, the beer is very hot, mm -hmm. and beer doesn't want to. Uh, ferment at that temperature. So you have to get it down to about room temperature, what we're standing in now. Right. So you want to hit about that 20 degrees C, 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, when you do that, you have to put it through some sort of chilling process. For us, uh, we use a Mueller plate chiller, mm -hmm. also recycled out of a dairy barn. Used to uh, be used for bringing milk uh, from the cow into the bulk tanks in the barn. Right. So you have to cool it down to fridge temperature. Okay. All right, and that, For us. Th where, where is that actual system? Where is, where is, it's what's actually that like? over here oh, in the okay. sink. Josh is just getting ready to assemble it. Okay, so this, you're cleaning this and you're assembling it. Yep. So this is what it looks like. That's so. a Mueller plate chiller. So from here, it would go to one of these big tanks one here? One of these fermenters. So, All right. Um, another vessel made out of stainless steel. They're jacketed, you can see right here. Um, basically, all your beers on the inside of this tank. They're temperature controlled. Um, we have a very interesting system up here, mm -hmm. which consists of a camping cooler and an air conditioner. That is interesting, yes. Very, yeah. uh, very red green of you. Exactly. <laughs> uh, glycol chillers that you put on the roof are very expensive. Uh -huh. For us, again, uh, we like to play and build stuff. So we've actually used an air conditioner and an old uh, camping cooler. It cools down the water, pumps it through these jackets and controls the temperature of the beer on the inside. Mm -hmm. In the same time, we extract all the heat in the fermentation process, pump it into the building, and that's how we heat our building in the middle of the winter. Right, and you had also mentioned that uh, this would sit here for what, 10 to 14 days? Yeah, depending on the recipe, usually the fermentation process starts dwindling off after four or five days, um, and then the rest of the process, you have to cold crash the tank, get it down to temperature, make sure your CO2 levels are right, and depending on the recipe, you're going to be between 10 days and two weeks. And how much bigger is this operation that you have right now than where you guys started? So Josh and I in the basement and garage of his house, we brewed <laughs> uh, 20 liter batches. And this is? Uh, this is, today we'll put about 1,775 liters of beer in here. So a little bit, so yeah. Yeah, okay. a little so bit different. Scaling's tough then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the process, uh, the end process here before you get your delicious beer in your glass, which we're gonna taste next, right? Right. Right? Right. I didn't come here for nothing. <laughs> So that does it for another episode of Auto Eats. Thank you very much, sir. The, uh, the bearded gentleman of Broadhead Beer, come and visit them. They're uh, an interesting combo. Uh, real quick, uh, where can people find you on social media and on, on the web? Uh, you can follow us on uh, our Twitter, which is Broadhead Beer, our handle, yep. and, uh, or our Facebook page, obviously Broadhead Beer as well. Okay, cool. And uh, the three beers that we've got here? Uh, going in order from this one, this is our Backbone Standard. It's a light blonde ale. Uh, 5%. This is our uh, Grindstone Amber. Also 5%, now available at the LCBO in one of these uh, tall boy cans. And this is our uh, Dark Horse Stout, which is our uh, oatmeal stout, comes in at a 5.5%. Now we should point out their business plan, or their goals at least, have been marked on all their cans. The only one they have yet to do is make a rap video. <laughs> so if there are any rappers out there, uh, please contact broadhead beer so i'm gonna try this one i don't sure. know if you want to pick one yourself I'll grab the grass all right cheers. cheers all right thanks for watching auto eats the liquid lunch edition delightful by the way try some of this stuff absolutely what goes better than beer and meat and salt <laughs> i'm gonna dunk in one of these uh mm. here mm. you guys know how to make a heck of a plate we'll do a food show <laughs>